Hey guys, it's May May, and you would think it is Nyoka week because I'm gonna do another Nyoka card that you guys have begged me for, but I'm gonna put my own twist on it, but I'm also gonna tell you how she did it. So you're gonna kind of get two for one on this one, okay? So this is Nyoka's card that she sent me at Christmas. Look how beautiful this is. This is um, not vellum, but almost like parchment paper here, and it's created in such a way that it sits and you put a tea light candle inside, and then, Inside, you see the little scene, the little city scene? It's glued inside of there. What I'm gonna do is show you today how to build this shape. But when I saw this, I got to thinking, I thought, how cool will it be if we could turn this into a box card? You know, the cards that close up, but they have little things inside? And then you can see them from here. Anyway, so I did my twist on it. So you'll be able to make both of these by the time we're done. And I'll be telling you, you know, all the way through how it goes. And when I say both of these, this is what I mean. So this is my twist. I made this using the Once Upon a Princess paper. Look at that cute little uh, Cinderella. And look, when you open it up, it's a box card and inside, are some of the pretty, some of the stickers. And it says like this, so I just treated this like a box card, like you've seen a thousand times, that have the little, look, I'll show you the, the ugly part, right? It has the little pieces inside. And so you can create your own little scene inside of there. So when you give this to someone, they can sit it on their work surface or their dresser or wherever, and they can see this cute little scene. And in here they have a frog, some flowers, a high heel, a princess dress. All of this is done from the paper pack. I didn't stamp anything. This is stickers and paper pack. So what I thought is since I did this one, today together we'd make one using the Fashionista pack, which is another adorable pack. So that's what we're going to do. So let's make this card, all right? Now I want to show you really quick, and I know this is going to take a second, but you just got to trust me. These are things you need to know. If you notice here what I did with these openings, Naoka did the same thing, but she did them with a postage stamp die, okay? So that die left a hole, just like mine did, but she backed hers with the parchment for the glow, okay? I'm just not going to back mine, but you totally could, and you could, you know, change this up any way you want. I just thought, why not get two for one, right? Okay, so there's that one. And by the way, Naoka used um, paper also. This is the Wise Men Still Seeking paper pack. And these, I think, are stamps that she used, but a lot of this is just embellishments that she used, which is gorgeous. And the way she wrote on the back was here, which I think is brilliant. You can do the same back here. All right, let's put a card together. Let's show you how this works. I just love I love it. I always want to put my own twist on something, so that's what I tried to do today. Now, the cool thing is, this starts from one eight and a half by 11 piece of paper, and by the way, I did not ask Naoka how she did this. I just kind of ciphered it. I just kind of figured it out myself. So, this is how I did mine, and hers might be a little different. I don't know, but this is how I did it. Okay, so the first thing I did, eight and a half by 11 piece of cardstock, put it into my scoreboard, and we're going to score it in several places. Number one, two and three fourths, five and a half, eight and one quarter, and that's all on this side, okay? So with the 11 inch side in your board, two and three fourths, five and a half, eight and one quarter. Then I'm gonna turn it in my scoreboard, and this time I'm gonna score it at four and a quarter all the way down. So four and a quarter all the way down the whole page, okay? So let me bring this where you can see it. You can see the score marks. There they are, let's flip it over and make, oh yeah, there they are. See them better here. All right, so one, two, three, and this one. And don't worry about writing that down. We'll put that on the blog for you so you can just go to the blog and get all the measurements. All right, the next thing I need to do is need to make a slice in between here. Now you've probably seen this done before. I mean, this, this has been around, people have done this, and there's even other, you can turn this into all kinds of things, but here's what you're gonna do, okay? You're gonna take that middle score mark you made and put it on the cut line of your trimmer. If you don't have a trimmer, just use a ruler and a sharp, a sharp knife and just cut from the first cross section to the last cross section. So this center section, all right, what I'm gonna do is take my blade and because this little trimmer has these little side marks so I can line it up with that first score mark that goes across, I'm just gonna press it in. I'm gonna pull it through the middle score mark down to the last score mark which is right there. And before I move this, I'm gonna lift it up. And I'm gonna look, I'm a little short here and I'm good here. So I'm gonna put this back in and I'm just gonna run it up just a smidge to get that side. So let me show you what we actually just did. On the middle score mark, we just cut this center section, okay? So you see that's all we did. Not hard at all, just that middle section. Now that I've got that done, I'm gonna go ahead and fold and crease everything, all the lines. And I'm gonna use my bone folder and really crease it. All right, so there's that one. I'm gonna fold this one in and crease it to it. 
Just try to keep everything kind of straight, as straight as you can. Then I'm gonna get this middle section here. You're gonna fold and crease all of the lines, so at this point it really doesn't matter which way things are going, because I need to fold and crease everything. Then I'm gonna go ahead and fold the middle down, and you wanna make sure you line this up nicely, okay? Because sometimes your score marks can get off. So take your time, line that up, and then crease that down. Like that. Let's line this one up nice and smooth. And then crease. Very good. Now what you'll have is this. We folded it in half, and you'll have this that does like this. Now do you recognize that from the card earlier? Okay, so I'll bring Nyoka's back over, and there you go. That's the shape, okay? Now, from looking at hers, she may have used two pieces to make hers happen, which is not a problem, okay? If you wanna use two pieces, instead of using one and making this slice, you're just gonna cut this piece in half and then glue these two panels together, and you get the same thing. So either way you wanna get there, you can do it ever how. This is just how I did it. All right, now we need to cut out our die piece here. So to do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close this up, okay? And the die I chose, this is one of my Brutus Monroe dies. Um, this is the oval. And I thought the oval would be pretty for a good window. And I'm gonna put it here. Now I want it to cut through both of these panel pieces. So let me show you what we're doing. Folding this paper in half, I want it to cut through both of these pieces. That's what's gonna give me the window. So when I close it, I just wanna pay attention to where those are. It's right here in this bottom corner. And this is where I'm gonna cut. All right, so let's bring the cuddle bug over. Um, we'll do it sideways like this. And then my plates, which I've hidden from myself here. You guys would not believe the mess in this craft room. You probably would, we're all crafters. All right, so I'm gonna lay this in like this, okay? Put my piece in. And then because of the way I have this laid, it's this bottom panel here, okay? I'm gonna line this guy up. Now, I got really close last time. If you need to measure or mark or anything, you go right ahead. But you guys know me, I am the queen of eyeballing. So I'm gonna eyeball, that's where I want that to go. Then I'm gonna place my other plate down and cut. Now I'm gonna run this through twice because this is snug. I've got a folded piece of paper and a die, okay? So I'm gonna run it through once and it's gonna wiggle on my table, that's all there is to it. Then I'm gonna come back over it just to be sure. Because again, I want it to cut through both pieces. If you don't have a die to cut this, do not fret. You can just trace a shape and just cut it on both sides. It will not be a big deal. As long as you get an opening, then the card will work. So here's my two pieces, which by the way, aren't these awesome to use for a card for something else? Save those pieces. They even, because I used that stitch die, they even have little stitched edges on them. Perfect. Okay, move this guy out of the way. We're done with you for now. And then, uh, I have something on my um, plates. You know what we're gonna do? Here's how we're gonna fix it. We're gonna turn it inside out and just pretend like this is the inside, is the outside now. We'll just have to make some adjustments in the folds. But this stuff happens. I have I have something on my cuddle bug plates I need to clean off and it's causing me a little bit of heartache. You won't have to do this part, so you know, don't worry about this on yours. Okay, so now you can see our little opening, right? I need to fold this too and then fold this to get it working. There we go. So now we have this cute little opening. Now to make the crossbars, let me bring my card back over. Now to make these little crossbars that are gonna hold anything you put in there. It's so easy, y'all. It looks hard, but it is so easy. All right, piece of paper, this or piece of card stock, okay? And let me tell you the measurements just because, and that'll be in the blog post as well. So it's three and three quarters wide by three inches tall. I'm gonna put this into my scoreboard on the three and three quarter side. I'm gonna score it half an inch in from one end and half an inch from the other. So half an inch, half an inch, okay? Now I'm doing this to save time because I did not want to score four different times. Now I'm gonna cut this down to be my bar pieces and they need to be three quarters of an inch each. So now that I've scored it, when I cut these down at three fourths of an inch, I don't have to go back and score four times. So score once, and cut three times, because we're gonna have to cut this three. Ooh, I did not close that down. Almost made a mistake, okay? And then three-fourths, one more time. 
And this gives me my little crossbar sections. Now, if you're using a die that's bigger, the reason mine are three-fourths is because notice I moved my die up and I wanted these to hide in that shape. But if you're using a bigger die, you might wanna make your little crossbars a little thinner, but just adjust that to how you need it. Now, here's how I did this. I opened this guy up, okay, just like so. Took these little guys and went ahead and folded these pieces in, both pieces facing the same direction just like that. And I'm gonna go ahead and get them all prepped for this. Make sure you get those folded nice and square. Take your time to get these square because you'll need them to be that way when you put them in. Fold this dude down, this dude down. Like I said, all folding the same direction, inward, like so, and then like so. Now, we're gonna take all of them in this square panel, rectangle panel, not the first panel here, but the one here, okay? There's a line right here, it's a score mark. Let me draw it with a, so you guys can see it. This is one of our score marks. There it is. So right here in this panel, here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna take these four pieces, and you're gonna start with the first one. You're gonna put a little glue on it, okay? And then this piece with the little flap facing the panel line, you're gonna glue this at the bottom of your panel, facing the score line, but not crossing the score line. If you cross the score line, remember we get resistance and we don't wanna do that. So let me show you what I did. I'm gonna hold it up like this so you can see it there. Let me bring it this way, maybe it's better. I just glued it right to the edge of that score mark, okay? Now, this makes the rest so easy. Now we're gonna take the next one, put glue on the same side, okay? Then I'm gonna come right next to the last one and place this one. And the distance is that folded half inch, okay? So basically these will all just kind of line up like cordwood. Do you guys say that, stack up like cordwood? So that's how I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna take the next one and I like to kind of make sure that I've got them folded right. I'm using single-sided paper, so it doesn't matter. But if you're using pattern paper, you need to pay attention to your folds. And again, just the distance of that folded flap from the last one glue that one in place, and then the last one. I wonder if you guys say that saying, we say it, and that means like, uh, I guess cordwood is like a uh, wood we use for fireplaces. That's kind of what we call it. I don't know, those weird sayings in the South. All right, so I got all four of them glued right beside each other. Now this is where it gets even easier. I promise it's so easy. Ready for this? We're gonna lay these down one at a time. So I'm gonna lay it down, lay it down, lay it down right on top of each other. Okay, now the only thing you have to make sure of here is that these little flaps are not crossing each other. If they're crossing, you're gonna get some resistance. And I have one that is, and that's just from not folding them exactly the same, not scoring them, whatever. I'm gonna come right here to this edge and I'm just gonna snip a piece away. That's all I need to do. And then I'm gonna lay them down and make sure nobody's crossing. This one right here is a little close for me so to save myself headache later, I'm just go ahead and trim it. Just make sure it's not crossing. But I like a half an inch piece to glue down. I feel like I get better um, like longevity. If I had a quarter of an inch piece right here, I'm afraid it wouldn't stick very well. So that's why I did a half inch flap. Now you're just gonna come in and put glue on every one of these little flaps, just like this with them laying down, okay? Fold this piece over. And these guys are now going to attach right where they need to be all on their own. You're not gonna have to do anything else. That's it, just glue this down. How easy is that, right? Oh, so easy. All right, and then once those are in, when you do this, look, they go right across for you to put all your pretties on. So stinking easy, I love it. Now we can do all the pretties. Now, when I made mine, I didn't go ahead, we're gonna glue this together in a little bit, but I left it open so I could get good um, reach inside here to put all my pretties in. So let me show you that. I'm gonna get this folded correctly, it's not folding well. And if you want to, like, you can go ahead and do all this kind of prep fold ahead of time. There we go, I got a better fold. Now I need to pick what I'm gonna stand up inside of here, okay? Also, if you want to color this with another page, you need to go ahead and glue your backer pages down before you get to this point. I'm not gonna worry about that. I'm gonna leave it white so that my images will show really well. But if you wanted to, you could go ahead and put some paper inside of there as well. All right, let's go to the sticker page. Now, something I did to help me was this. I took my sticker page and I also took my die 
that I used to make that opening, and I just kind of held it to see what would fit good. This little dress would be so cute. If I wanted to use part of this lady, I could. Part of this lady, this little dress form would be cute. But what I did on my little princess card, let me show you. I picked one piece in the back to be kind of my focal point, and it's that big dress, because it was kind of tall. So what I'm gonna do is find the piece that I want to be my focal point. And you know what? One of these dudes would be so cute in there, wouldn't it? Like maybe this one. Then the other thing I did, I just did a little test run. This is exactly how I did this. I brought my little piece over, and I just kind of stuck this in and barely stuck it down. And then I just looked at it. So I'm gonna barely stick that to one of those little pieces, the one in the back. I say I am, let me get it in my hand. There we go. And just look at it and see, look how cute that is standing up in there like that. That might be what I use, it's actually very cute because I could use that and then some of the little bags and things. Or if I don't wanna use it, and remember these stick back down and they're all cardstock, so they're great for that. I might wanna use this little girl. Let's see what she looks like. When we get to putting these in permanently, I'll show you how I did this to make this easy, but I basically put one in one hand, held my hand on the riser or the little um, go across I wanted it to go on and stuck it down. So see that little dress in there? It's so cute. I don't know, I'm torn. I think I could put a couple of those in there. So I think I'm gonna do the dresses because I think I can put a, a couple in. So let's peel this guy back off. I'm gonna sit him as, or her aside. I guess I should say her, huh? So do that and get that onto my work surface. And then I think I'm gonna pull this one off too because I think I can put two in there. Go ahead and get you ready. Lay you off to the side like so. And then let's go back to it and see what else we can get. Let's see. I wanted to use like these little gift bags. I thought they were so cute. Oh, there's another little dress form. Oh, this is cute. The soulmate with the shoes. Let's pull it out. And I'm going to also pull out one of these little um, shopping bags. This one's cute. All right, so I got those ready. We're gonna prep those in just a second. The other thing I think I wanna do is see if any of these little words or little signs will fit. This little it's a girl thing and this will probably fit in the background. We'll do that in a few minutes. All right, let's prep these guys. Here's what I did. It makes a mess, but it works, okay? I bet this is all twisted and driving you insane, okay. So I'm gonna bring these guys over like this and I took my powder tool. You don't have to use a powder tool. You could use cornstarch, you could use baby powder, you could use cosmetic powder, it would not matter. I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna pat it on the back. And what this does is it takes the sticky off. Now, if you don't want to do this, if you would rather do this in another way that might be neater, you can just stick these down to paper and then just cut around them. If you have a brother scan and cut, you can stick them down to paper and let your scan and cut do the work. So I did one pass, then I took them and I put them in that extra powder and just let them pick up that extra powder off the table. It's messy, I told you, but it works. Then I'm gonna take these guys aside and clean my table. I'm using a little squeaky clean. I find that this squeaky clean is so good for these mats. I don't know if you guys are using squeaky clean, but it conditions my mat and it keeps it looking so nice and clean and black. I just love it. Now, do I know that it conditions it? I don't know that. It just seems as though it does. So get that nice and clean. Ugh, look at the dirt, that stuff picks up everything. So these guys are ready to go now. All right, so let's bring our little piece back over. And this is what I did. I just took them and at the bottom, I applied glue because this is what's gonna stick down to our little crossbars, okay? I laid this down to the side and on this end, I put my hand on the crossbar I was gonna be placing this item, whatever it may be. And then I used the other hand to kind of meet it and line it up. And I'm gonna let these dresses go in two places. So I'm gonna put this one kind of to the front and just get that stuck in there like that. It's so cute and it's so easy. And this is the same thing you do if you're making one of those other box cards. It's the same concept. Then I think I'm gonna put this one up kind of to the front and put some distance between them and maybe even a little lower. That's super cute. So let's put some on there. And then I'm grabbing the one I wanna use, which is the second one instead of the third one. I'm gonna push this down a little lower than my last dress so I have a little bit of like stair stepping in there. Glue that dude down. Then I'm gonna sit it up for a second and see. I think I want this one to be on that third row a little bit lower. Oh, that's cute. Yep. 
third row a little lower. So again, I'm just putting my glue at the bottom and then sticking it on the riser that I want it to be on. All right, I'm gonna grab, grab the third riser so I know where I'm going with it. Stick this inside, and I want this one to be a little lower, but in the center, so I'm just pulling that down. As long as it doesn't come out the end, I'm fine. Oh, that's cute. And then the little gift bags, I think would be cute kind of right here in the front. Yep, are the little shopping bags. So we'll put a little glue here. And then again, I'm gonna grab the riser I wanted on, and this time it's the first one. And I don't even have to go all the way through the thing. I can just come to the front. I think I'll put it off to one side like that. Now there is plenty of room for me to add lots more things in there, but look how cute. Oh my goodness, I just love this. Let's put some of those little signs. Oh, actually, let me show you. Now I can glue this shut. I just did that so I could have a little more room, but I'm gonna take my glue now and just run it in here and glue these sides down. I just did that really, so if I needed to open it a little wider to get my hand in, I could. But you can do this any way you want. You can glue this ahead of time. I just thought I'd wait till I had to shut it. Cause see how big I can open it if I need to get in there. And then put a little glue here, I missed that side. And then just close that down. These are just so stinking cute. Oh, I love it. All right, let's put a little sign in there. Let's go back to our sticker sheet. And I wanna see if this It's a Girl thing will fit. Cause I think it will. Yeah, it will. And I'm gonna put it at a little angle back here toward the back. And I'll turn it so you guys can see that. See where I put, it's a girl thing. Oh, I blocked it. There it is, it's a girl thing. And let's put something on this side. Lots of little things. I like see it, love it, buy it, repeat. This little sign is cute. So I'm gonna put it over to here. Something like that. And I love using the stickers, y'all know. I'm all about letting the stickers do the work. Then what I did for these side pieces is I went into the paper pack and you know the cut-aparts that I love so much. I chose cut-aparts that were what I want. So I used one that looks like this, it's gonna go on this side, and one that looks like this for this side. And I cut them just exactly. Um, they're a little too short to get the job done, you know, automatically, so there'll be a little gap at the top, but they work perfect for the width. So this one has a little quote that I think is cute for the inside of a card. And how cute is this to give to somebody they can sit it on their vanity, or if you do it like, um, get well soon theme. They can sit this on their bedside table, or if you do this, um, gonna miss you theme, they could put this on like their windowsill in their new home. Anything you want to do, and this would be so cute displayed in somebody's home. I think this is adorable. And easy to understand. When you take this out of the um, envelope, you know that's what this does. It like, it makes sense. Now I'm not through, I think this needs something. And I wanna show you what I did on the princess one cause I don't know if I'm gonna find it in this one. But I took a sticker and stuck it down and folded it in half and it just kinda went across the middle and I'm perfectly fine with how that looks. I think it looks adorable. So let's see if we, oh look, I do. Shop till you drop, let's do the same thing. Same little trick, line this up here. It just looks so fancy going across. And then I just bent the sticker. It just came just like this and just grabbed it and bent it and it just goes all the way across. Perfect. Then I decided in my other one that I wanted some little pieces just here and there. So like this one that says love it is cute. This little heart, I'm gonna grab it. Oh, this little flower is perfect. There's a little flower. And let's see if there's something else I wanna add. Maybe, we'll see. All right, so I went ahead and used my powder tool on these as well so that they wouldn't stick too awful bad because I want them to hang off a little bit. So without making too big of a mess, we'll just do these like this because they're tiny. And I'll pick up what I've dropped down here on my work surface. You can do these ahead of time and I probably should have so I could clean it all up at one time, but I wasn't thinking. So like this one, I just wanted a little something to kind of hang over the edge. So I just put a little glue to one side like so, and then I'm gonna put this guy right here, and it just hangs over a little bit and makes it look a little more dimensional, right? It's so cute, y'all, so cute. And this one I think I'll put at the top on this side. So a couple little dots. Stick that up there like so, it says love it. Again, overlapping our little opening because I want it to look a little dimensional. So that's what I would do on the inside. You could add bling and all kinds of stuff, but that's the inside. But let me show you the outside. So if we close this down and give it a nice crease, we have basically an A2 size card here. 
So I went into the paper stash again, or to that paper stack, and this is what I chose. I'm gonna put this down as a backer, like so, and then I'm gonna put this guy on top of there. So let me glue this down real quick. Isn't it awesome when you can let the paper do the work and it looks so, so cute, and you get to play with stickers and glue and paper, it's just fun just fun. So there's that one and then this. Then to sign it, you have plenty of room on the back to add a panel that maybe you write on or you can write directly on the card either way. You have plenty of options for that. Plenty. So look at there. A girl can never have too many shoes and when you open it up, it looks like this on the inside. I think it's adorable. I love it. I love the little aperture. It just makes sense. Like you could just put something in there to be so cute. So there's one. Here's the little princess one. And look, when you close it, you can see, isn't that cute? And then Naoka's, which is just as gorgeous. And you can put a tea light candle in there and light that up. Isn't that beautiful? Now, I, wanted, I told you I wanted to make sure I explained this to you. The biggest difference in these two are the shape of her opening, okay? Because she did a more square shape and she used a little like a parchment type paper and put a little city scene behind it so it would shadow out. But the basic construction of the card is the same. I do think she used two pieces and glued them together, and I just used the one piece, but it doesn't matter how you get there, as long as you get there, right? All right, guys, there you go. Two options. Let me see if I can put these all on screen. It's not gonna matter. You're not gonna be able to see them anyway. Two options. Three different kinds of cards that you guys might want to send out to somebody this year for who knows what. I love how they turned out. I hope you guys enjoyed them. Now, if you make these, I want to see them. One like mine or one like Naoka's. I love whenever you're inspired by something I do on video and you share photos of it for me. So I would like to see them either on our Facebook group called May May Made It and So Did I or in our customer gallery on our website. Just type in the, um, the words maymaymadeit.com and then at the top of the um, website, you'll see a little bar and it says more. Click more and the customer gallery will pop up. And if you need inspiration, there's all kinds of inspiration there for you guys. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. Talk to you again real soon. Bye-bye.